There is a bipartisan deal on the table to prevent another government shutdown. Joining me now with the Democratic perspective is Colorado Senator Michael Bennett, a member of the Intel and Finance Committees. Uh, the president's calling it stingy and his office, and including, including himself, is now saying that he has other ways to get funding for the wall. If he tries to, to, to use a national emergency or redirecting funds or a, a loophole in the U.S. code to get Defense Department money, what are the Democrats going to do, Senator? Well, I don't, I don't think it'll just be Democrats. I think it'll be Democrats and Republicans who, who believe that Congress has the power of the purse and the president can't just reprogram money willy-nilly however he wants to do it. So I hope he will sign this and bring this ordeal to an end so that we can reopen the government and begin to focus on all the billion other things that we should be focused on beyond this obsession on this one item. I, I want to get to about half of those billion things, so I'm going to try and run through these quickly. Okay, good, the good, Intel, let's do it. The Intel Committee, uh, NBC's reporting. Uh, let's, settle, let's settle for 10 of those things. We could do that. <laughs> we don't have to do half a billion. Depends yeah. on how quick your answers are. So the Intel Committee yesterday, NBC. I disagree with what the chairman said. There's one thing. Give me, so tell me why. Because I think we have not reached a conclusion yet about, and I, and I, I think we're, our investigation is continuing. And until it's completed, just like the Mueller investigation, I don't think we should draw judgments about what the evidence shows. Do you need to find collusion in writing from President Trump to Vladimir Putin, something that concrete, to find the president guilty of some sort of wrongdoing? No, I think that, 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 first of all, it's not a standard, it's not really a legal standard to begin with. There are all kinds of things that are going to be considered as, as part of this investigation and, and of the interviews. I'm sure a phone call between the two of them would do on that subject. I'm just kidding. <laughs> So um, let, let's talk about the priorities uh, for this Congress. Uh, what do you see as the, as the number one issue? What would be the number one piece of legislation that you would try to push forward um, if, if you were, I don't know, the Senate Majority Leader? Uh, I would push forward a bill to reverse Donald Trump's tax bill as evidence that anybody in Congress had some sense that uh, the country faces an enormous challenge with a lack of economic mobility and a huge amount of income inequality. I think that's what we ought to be focused on is reversing the damage that he did by passing that tax bill. There's a lot of other stuff behind that that we need to do How as would well. you restructure the uh, taxes in this country? Uh, I would dramatically increase the tax cut for poor people and for middle class people, and I would raise taxes on the wealthiest people. Would you get behind country. an, I don't know, uh, an Alexandria Ocasio Cortez plan that uh, taxes 70% of those who earn more than 10 million, or does it look something more like Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax or Bernie Sanders raising the estate tax? Any one of those? I think that the uh, inheritance tax is a very important place to look because that is a place where you've got intergenerational wealth transfers that aren't being taxed and it's hard to argue that somebody's still innovating when they're expiring uh, or that if they're receiving that money that they've somehow innovated in order to achieve it. So I think that's a place where we should be paying attention. I think we should raise the capital gains rates in this country. Uh, and. Um, and I think that uh, taxes can be higher on, the, on, the, on, on, on people at the very top. I think that's right. I don't think a wealth tax will work. I don't think that's administratively a sensible thing to do. But I, I do think focusing on how we tax capital instead of having such a focus on taxing work would be important as well. Um, let's talk about health care. Uh, you said on Meet the Press on Sunday that um, we've gone from some people will lose some of their doctors, which was uh, something the Democrats paid a, a dear price for after Obamacare was passed, um, to everyone's going to lose all of their doctors. I, I assume you were referring to uh, Kamala Harris talking about uh, putting everybody on Medicare and taking away private um, insurance. What would your plan be? I know you have one that, that has been proposed in the Senate. So, let me say two quick things about that. First of all, I was referring to the bill itself, because the bill, this is an actual bill. It's not like the Green New Deal. This is a piece of legislation, and that calls for, uh, uh, among other things, it, um, it, it ends private insurance in this country. Every single 
union in the country that's negotiated for health care plans, many of which are the best in the country, would go away under the plan. 20 million people that are on Medicare Advantage would lose their plan. So that's why I said I don't think it's a great idea. My plan is Medicare X. It's a true public option. Tim Kaine and I put it together. It's a buy-in to that would be administered by Medicare. And I think it's a good way of doing it. I think it'll give people the choice. I think a lot of people would choose to be in the public option uh, and, and not have to hassle with private insurance, but we ought to give people that choice. And just to go back to your other question about taxes, I have a bill with Sherrod Brown that would dramatically increase the child tax credit. And some professors at Columbia University have said that piece of legislation alone would reduce childhood poverty in this country by 40%. And it would cost 3% of what Medicare for all would cost. I mean, it just seems to me that we ought to be, the chance to take that huge whack out of childhood poverty for something that costs so little compared to what it would cost to put Medicare for all in place, it just seems like our priorities are not are sort of out of whack. Well, let's stay on the subject of children and talk about education. You were the superintendent of the Dem Denver Public Schools uh, years ago. I know you've written op-eds about how teacher pay needs to be higher. You wrote one last year. There are teachers, though, that are picketing right now who say that the decisions that you made as superintendent are part of the problem and part of the reason they are they are picketing right now, why they are on strike. They don't like the bonus structure. They say that they are not paid enough. My colleagues, Ali Velshi and Stephanie Rule, had a teacher on the other day that is sleeping in her car, renting out all of the rooms of her house in order to pay her bills. Uh, teachers in Denver and all over this country are not paid enough. And believe me, you don't need to tell me that they're picketing. I've got two kids in the Denver Public Schools who are at home right now because of the strike. So I hope the two parties come together uh, quickly to resolve it. They, no, nobody on either side of the bargain table needs to hear from me. They know uh, me well enough to, to know that I'm not going to get involved in their business. But let me say this. When I took over that school district, we were sixth in the metro area in Denver in teacher pay. When we left, we were number one. No district in Colorado has hired more teachers than the Denver Public Schools. And I am the first to say over the last 15 years, because it's the fastest growing urban school district in America, I am the first to say that all over this country, it is shameful what we are paying our teachers. And the reason that we are paying them so little is that we're operating a system of training and recruiting and paying, compensating teachers that was all designed in an era when the labor market discriminated against women and said, you can be a teacher or you can be a nurse. And, we, and based on that, we subsidized our education system based on that discrimination in the labor market. Thank God we're no longer in that labor market anymore, but we've got to update our approach to paying teachers. And it's, among other things, we need to pay them much more uh, than we have. And we need to acknowledge the fact that people can go do other things. Was the bonus you know, structure a good idea? I think, it, I think it is a good idea to pay people more if they're working in a, in a high poverty school where it's hard to attract teachers. I think it's a good idea to pay people more if they're bringing a special set of skills like special ed or English language acquisition uh, to, to the classroom. I think it's good to pay teachers more um, uh, for those kinds of things. And I'm not, I don't, I think it's completely appropriate that uh, decisions we made 15 years ago should be changed and, 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 and renegotiated and reconsidered. I have no problem with any of that. What I think is uh, unforgivable would be leaving the systems the way they are today and expecting that we're going to be able to close the achievement gap drive economic uh, growth in the country and give people the kind of opportunity they deserve but do not have because we have an education system that in too many ways is reinforcing the income inequality we have, not liberating people from it. And that's hard work. It's, I know the people on both sides of that bargaining table well, uh, and they're doing their best for their, uh, for their constituencies, and I hope that they come to an agreement today and that tomorrow uh, we can get back to the business of teaching kids in Denver Public Schools. We didn't make it to a billion topics. We didn't quite make it to 10 either, but we got five solid topics in there. And I, and, and I want to thank you for raising the last one because that, in my mind, is the most important question we're facing. 
uh, as a country, and we almost never talk about it. So thank you. Well, ha we were happy you came on to talk about it. Come back anytime, Senator All right. Bennett. We appreciate See you it. Soon. I'm not going to ask you about 2020 because I assume thank we'll find you. out that's, whenever that's, that's you decide. Interesting topic. Thank you. <laughs> Colorado See ya. Democratic Senator Michael Bennett. Thank you very much.